Bob Eddy for today's talk. Thank you, Shirley. Good afternoon. I, like I said, I really, I have an outline for this afternoon, but most of what I'm about to tell you comes from divine source that they told me that I need to be here today and share this message with you. And if I was to put a title on it, I would call it My Personal Adventures with Jesus, which have been quite active lately. Um, but in the very beginning, I was a young boy, seven or eight years old. My parents sent me off to Sunday school at a church different than the one that we normally attended. And I couldn't tell you now what denomination that church was, but I can remember a group of kids and the uh, minister standing up in front and asking if we had all found Jesus. And I really didn't know what he was talking about. So he was, anybody who hasn't found Jesus, raise your hand. And I raised my hand and I went up to... You know, he called me off into a separate group, and I was taken by an assistant minister off into another room, and there were four or five of us, and he continued to talk and talk and talk and talk about Jesus, and I really didn't know what he was talking about, who he was talking about, and they, at the end, he said, have you found Jesus? And I said, yes, just so I could get out of the room. <laughs> I really didn't know. Um, as I grew up, I, I grew up in a religious family, but I always had an issue with the Bible. I've always had to have a Bible in my home. I've had to have a Bible. I've very rarely been able to get myself to read the Bible. And about 25 years ago, I was out at the church at Lake Pleasant, and Reverend Charlotte Gordon was on the podium. And she explained to me that she had called me one of the 12 disciples. Further in my story, we'll discuss that. But that I had lived in the time of Jesus, and that's why I have a problem with the Bible, is it's been reinterpreted so many times that, although it's very important to me, I don't always agree with everything that it says. And now, when I work up here as a podium assistant, uh, somebody, somewhere, tells me my reading for the day. And they help me find what it is that I need in the Bible that I will understand, that I can share with everybody that I believe so that I can put it across as something that I can do. And a while back, I think many of you have met my friend Keith, who runs the holistic store in West Brookfield. Uh, I was in his store one night and he asked me if I would come up and, and do a reading for him upstairs. So I. Went up after we closed the store. I went upstairs and I sat before this beautiful table full of crystals and did a reading for her. And the whole time that I was doing the reading, there was a spiritual figure standing in the corner of the room that wouldn't quite let me see who he was. I could see him, but only in very light gray tones. And I could just see his, his figure there. And I noticed often when I would go and visit Keith in his store, that I would see this same figure in the store, but he'd never really let me see who he was. Um, Keith and I, Keith invited me to be on his radio shows with Reverend Charlotte, and while we were doing radio shows, we did them in the same room that I had done that reading in, and here's that same figure coming and standing in the same spot and watching what we're doing. And while we were doing it, I, they kind of asked me where I was because I wasn't really paying attention to what we were doing on the radio show. So here I was on the radio saying, well, I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted by Jesus standing in the corner. Because while we were doing the show, he decided to let me see who he actually was. So we had a little bit of a conversation with him on the radio that day. and um, It continued. And I've continued to see Jesus more and more often as I've progressed and meditated and such. Um, one of the most remarkable was the day that, uh, it was the first day that Keith came here to the church, and I was acting as a healing channel that day. I had this healing chair up here in the front, Keith came and sat in my healing chair, and actually I think this was before he revealed himself to me at the, uh, 
during the radio show. Keith was sitting in my, in my chair, and when I act as a healing channel, I can always see the person. I, heal, I channel their healers normally. I don't hand, channel my own healers. So I can see the person that, who I'm channeling, and as I'm doing the, the healing for Keith, I recognize the person that I'm channeling as the man who's always in the corner of the store. And then all of a sudden he got bright and brilliant and had this glow around him and I recognized him. That's Jesus. And I said, why have you never let me see you like this before? And he went, yeah, it's church. I've got to put on a show. <laughs> <laughs> right there I knew I like this guy. Um, this is a little uncomfortable, but I want to just touch on it very briefly. Um, there was one day a member of the church came to my house and she had the Bible and she was, she was really shaking that Bible and yelling at me and telling me all these things that I had to do with this church that I really wasn't comfortable with. But she was telling me that if we didn't do them, we were going to be, our eternal souls were going to be damned because we weren't doing things properly here in this church. And she told me, you know, you someday will be pastor of that church and there this is going to be one of the biggest tests on how you handle this. Jesus appeared to me behind her and just let me know that, yes, the way I handled this was a major test, but it wasn't as to how I was going to handle what she was telling me to do, but how I was going to handle her to tell her I was not going to do it. Because that was not what he wanted for this church. Um, as I continued to meditate and go to classes with Reverend, Reverend Lorraine, Reverend Charlotte, and Reverend Betsy. Uh, I got comfortable with my sacred garden, the place that I go when you're free to go wherever you want during meditation. I go and I sit by the edge of a pool with this beautiful waterfall that comes down into it. And I, my guides and my angels will come and talk to me there. And it's just a, a wonderful spot. And several times, Jesus has come and sat with me there. And sometimes we just sit with our feet in the water and just hang out. We don't talk. We just enjoy each other's company. And there was one day we were doing that, and he just kind of stood up, dropped his robe, jumped in the water, and said, okay, come swimming with me. Um, and I jumped in the water, and I'd been in there for, you know, it was meditation time, so I'd been in there for a while. All of a sudden I realized that I don't know how to swim. I was out in the middle of this water, my feet weren't touching the ground. I was just fully immersed in the warmth of love and enlightenment and I didn't have to worry about the fact that my feet weren't touching the ground because he had me safe and secure. Um, I was with Reverend Betsy one day and we did a past life regression. And journey that I, the past life that I went back to was the lifetime that I had spent in Jesus' time. When I first arrived in that, that place, that time, there was this group of people who came to me in the marketplace and grabbed me and said, oh, you have to come listen to this guy. And we went across the marketplace and there was a very small group gathered. And we, uh, we, went and we listened and there were probably only 20 or 30 people who were watching him at that point. It was very early in his you know, experience at um, bringing love and enlightenment to the world. And then we were brought through uh, the guided meditation to an important experience in that lifetime. And I walked to that on the immediate left hand of Jesus. He was standing immediately on my right. And... We walked up to the edge of almost a cliff, and there were thousands of people spread out before us. And I just sat down in the background and listened to him speak to thousands of people. Uh, and then, you, through the guided meditation, you're brought to your death in that life, if you can handle it or not. And I was brought to that experience, and there were many, many people around. 
And then just everything went black and peaceful. And uh, you know, someone asked me, well, if you were one of the 12 disciples, not many of them died a peaceful death. But I believe your soul leaves before your actual death. So whatever happens to your human body, your soul is at peace. And I was, in that lifetime, I was so at peace with the whole process that death did not bother me. A few weeks ago, um, I had an experience where uh, I had gotten in touch with a shaman who was from Arizona, and over the phone we did a, a clearing. And he had found that I had had a demon attached to my energy body that was keeping me from progressing the way that I need to progress uh, in my gifts and such as I work through the church. And as part of that, he brought me to, uh, you know, cleared the, the demon and everything, then had me meditate and go to my sacred garden. And as I was sitting there, Jesus showed up almost immediately. And John, the, uh, the shaman who was on the phone with me, was telling me that as I'm sitting there, that you know, different things were going to happen. I said, well, you know, for starters, Jesus just showed up. And he said, okay. And then he continued to talk. And as he was talking in one ear and telling me that uh, I needed to call in my higher self and then tell my higher self that I needed a new guide to take the space that the demon was taking or someone else would be able to take, come in and take that space. Well, he's telling me that. Jesus is in my other ear telling me, that's why I'm here. And I thought, wow, this, Jesus has time to be a personal guide for me. It's pretty humbling when you realize who he is, what he did, and the millions of people that he has to care for. But being able to be omnipresent, he's able to take care of each and every one of us. So he's telling me that that was why he was there as John was telling me that I was in need of a new guide. And that's got to be one of the most awe-inspiring moments of my life. And you know, bounce around a little bit again. And um, in all of the pews when I came in this morning, I put little slips of paper. When I was a teenager, my my aunt was one of my early mentors, and she taught me that prayer. It's a very simple protection prayer. And very simply says, I am surrounded by the radiant white Christ light. Only good can come to me, and only good can go from me. And as you say that to yourself, you wrap yourself in that glowing white light. And you know that you're safe. And it was just, it's a quick and simple prayer, and you wrap it around yourself, and you say it three times. The other night, I woke up from a nightmare. And I said, okay, well, I just woke up from a nightmare. What do I do? I wrapped myself in the radiant white Christ light. And then as soon as I started, there was Jesus standing at the foot of my bed to make sure that I was okay and could get back to sleep. So... As I was writing that outline this morning, he came and he was standing there watching what I was writing. And he wanted me to share a few things with you that you know, the reason that he has come to me and he has started teaching me all of this and being in my life as much as he was. And as he was standing there, the words that I, I have typed were he taught peace, love, harmony, and acceptance. And I continued on, and he brought me back up, and in capital letters we typed, period. That is it. That is all that Jesus wants us to know, is that he taught peace, love, harmony, and acceptance. Everything else makes no difference. All he wants us to know is Peace, love, harmony, and acceptance. The Bible, well, it's a great book. It may be filled with many things that he did not teach, that men interpreted and reinterpreted, and things like that. But it's all about peace, love, harmony, and 
acceptance. And I'm uncomfortable with the words that I'm about to tell you, but he told me I have to say them. And it just says who he was, a man, a medium, who was willing to listen to God and spirit and share their message, as I am doing for him now. Thank you for listening to us today. This is only the beginning of our journey, and I'm sure that we will continue to share the message. Thank you.